So in this video, we're going to look at solving trig equations. Um, so before we get into the solving of the trig equations, we want to refer back to the trig graphs, okay? And the one I have here is, of course, the sine curve. So this represents y equals sine x. Now, there is some videos on the trig graphs. If you'd like to familiarize yourself a little bit more with them, do look up those videos. There's uh, two parts to it. There's trig graphs part one, which deal with the sine curve, cos curve, and tan curve, and, and then part two, which is the transformations of the sine and, and cos curves. So, quick revision then. This, of course, is what the sine curve looks like. And from that video lesson, we learned, of course, that this curve... Uh, is this shape, and that shape repeats itself every 360 degrees. That shape there will just repeat itself again and again and again. So when we come to looking at solving trig equations, okay, we might have something like this. And from junior cert, we, we have been able to solve something like this. We always know, uh, and sometimes the course is written like this. Either way, it's the same equation. And we've known before with our junior cert trig that if we're looking for an angle, we do, of course, sine inverse on the calculator of that half, and that will give us the angle. And so when I do that... Always make sure, of course, that your angle is in degrees if you're dealing with degrees. If you want to give your answer in radians, of course, make sure your calculator is in radians. I'm going to deal with degrees. Um, I much prefer to work with degrees, and if I need to give an answer in terms of radians, I do that conversion at the end. So sine inverse a half, I'm getting, of course, 30 degrees. So that is what we would have done at junior cycle. Now, at leaving cert... We now understand from our familiarization with our actual trig graphs that if sine x is equal to a half, now roughly there's a half, then of course there's going to be more than one solution. Because if I draw my line across here at where it's equal to a half, I'm going to see that there is a solution here, there's a solution here, and there's a solution here. And of course, that's going to continue on and on and on. So there are lots of solutions. Between 0 and 360 degrees, my standard period, there are, of course, two solutions. I can see that. One of them must be 30 degrees. So that must be my 30 degrees there. But there obviously is another solution as well. And the key thing now at Leaving Cert is being able to find all the solutions to a trig equation like this. The good news is with your trig graphs, there's always a kind of a symmetry going on or an equal spacing thing. So in other words, if I know there's a gap of 30 degrees here, there's going to be a gap of 30 degrees here. So if, if that's 30 degrees, and I know it cuts the x-axis here at 180 degrees, and that gap is 30 degrees, I know that that value there, where sine x is equal to a half, must be 150. And I can always double check that by doing that on the calculator. Uh, sine 150 equals a half, and of course it does. So the thing is, we don't want to have to draw out the graphs uh, each time we're trying to solve any trig equations, whether it's the sine graph, the cos graph, or the tan graph, uh, because that would be quite laborsome. So what we're going to use instead is a little process uh, relating to the unit circle, which is this, which will help us realise what's going on in each of the graphs. So it means we don't have to draw them out every time. We're going to be able to figure out where all the extra solutions are without drawing out the graphs. So the first thing I want to explain is the relationship between our little process, this unit circle that we're going to use, and the graphs that we have. Okay. So uh, with our unit circle, we're obviously starting here at zero degrees, and then obviously up to here is 90 degrees, straight straight angle of course is 180 degrees three quarters of the circle is 270 back around to the start again our full turn is of course 360 degrees and then in each of the quadrants we have these letters s a t c 
uh, cast it is a nice little way of remembering uh, how they go in. Remember and start down here in the bottom right hand corner. C-A-S-T. Okay, so what these letters mean is this. The relationship between this unit circle and all these graphs is that between zero degrees and 90 degrees, all, A stands for all, all of the graphs, the sine, cos and tan, are positive between zero and 90. So let's have a look. If you look here then, between zero and 90, this sine graph is, of course, positive. In other words, above the x-axis. So that makes it positive, okay? The cos as well is also above the x-axis, is also positive. And the tan graph, of course, is here above the x-axis, which is also positive. The S then stands for, in this quadrant, in other words, between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, only the sine curve is positive. So let's have a look. There's between 90 and 180, and there's the sine curve, and it is, of course, still above the x-axis, so it's positive. However, the cos curve between 90 and 180 is below the x-axis, so that's not positive, that's negative, that's going to give negative results. In other words, for any angles between 90 and 180, you're going to get negative results. For the tan, you're going to get negative results as well, because here's the graph, and it is, of course, below the x-axis between 90 and 180. The T quadrant then between 180 and 270 implies that only the tan is positive here. So between 180 and 270 here with the sine graph, we see it's below the x-axis, so negative. The cos between 180 and 270 is below the x-axis, so it's negative. But the tan, of course, between 180 and 270 is above the x-axis and is therefore positive. So that makes sense for that one. And the last one, of course, then is C, which, of course, implies that only the cos curve is positive between 270 and 360. So again, analyzing your sine graph, that's 270, 360 below the x-axis. Between 270, 360 above the x-axis, so there it is. We can see quite clearly it's positive. But the tan, of course, is negative. So there you go. That's your relationship between your unit circle and the sine, cos, and tan. And now we know that we're going to be able to rely on this solely to figure out uh, all the possible solutions now to our trig graphs. So let's jump into a couple of examples. So let's take this example, cos x is equal to a half. And we're told that your x, your angle, in other words, is between 0 and 360 degrees. Now, this is fairly standard, okay? Uh, it might change. We'll talk about that in different examples to follow. And with this standard period of 0 to 360 degrees, you're always going to find two solutions, okay, in that period for your sine, cos, and tan curves. And that's going to be standard uh, even if that period changes. You're always going to be looking to get your two main solutions. And then you see, because the curves all repeat themselves, the sine and cos curve in particular repeats itself every 360 degrees, then what's going to happen is if you want extra solutions, all you have to do is add on 360 degrees to get your multiple solutions because the curve will repeat itself every 360 degrees. Okay, so we'll talk about that later. Let's just first of all go about finding our two uh, initial important solutions. So the first one we're going to do in, our, in the way we would have done it at junior cycle. So cos inverse half, that's always how you find your first solution. We'll let the calculator do that hard work for us. So cos inverse, and we put in a half, and we get, of course, 60 degrees. So our first solution is 60 degrees. Now you're going to want to draw your unit circle for yourself. Okay, so we have C-A-S-T written like that. And of course, we can spot straight away that the 60 degrees is obviously between the 0 and 90. So it's here. That's where you've got uh, your solution. Now we know we should be finding another solution between 0 and 360 degrees. So what you need to analyze now is your result. Okay, the result obviously is a half. And that is positive. The key thing here is, is it positive or negative? A half is positive. And so now we need to ask ourselves, right, in which quadrants is the cos curve positive? 
And the answer is, of course, A, because they're all positive between 0 and 90 degrees. And then C, because we know that C stands for the fact that only the cause is positive between 270 and 360 degrees, that four, fourth quadrant. So now I know where my two solutions are. I've got one of them, so that's obviously 60 degrees, which means that's a gap of 60 degrees. Now, as I mentioned at the very start, there's always a nice little kind of symmetry or equal spacing going on with your graphs, okay? So when we're analyzing that equal spacing with regards to the unit circle, we're always analyzing it based on this horizontal line. So in other words, if you've got a spacing of 60 degrees going up this way, we're going to have a spacing of 60 degrees going down this way. And so, in order to figure out what the angle is all the way around to here, we can easily just do the calculation. 360 take away 60 degrees, which of course is 300. So there's our two solutions, 60 degrees and 300 degrees, and we can check both of those. And this is a good idea to do that. Cos 60 is, of course, a half. And now we'll check 300. Cos of 300 is also a half. So there's my two solutions in my standard period for the angle. Cos of each of those angles will equal a half. Okay, so let's try this question. So if you're feeling confident to press pause and see if you can do this yourself or see how far you can get on your own. We are looking for the angles between 0 and 360 degrees. That's our standard period. So we know we're looking for two solutions, okay? Uh, okay, so first thing you're going to do, of course, is solve it the way you would have done at junior cycle for your first solution. So tan inverse 1. And of course, when I do that on the calculator, Tan inverse 1 is, of course, 45 degrees. So there's my first solution. Now, to consider where the other solution is going to be, I get my unit circle up. Um, my 45 degrees, I know, is going to be here. And that makes sense because straight away you want to analyze your result. Your result, of course, is positive. And that means that we are going to get a solution in A, the quadrant where they're all positive, between 0 and 90, which is that one there. And the other quadrant where the tan curve will give positive results is in T. So it's in that quadrant there. Now, remembering we're always going uh, to analyze our spacing based on that horizontal line. So if this is a gap of 45 degrees, this is also a gap of 45 degrees. So the angle I'm looking for now is all the way around to here. And to figure that out, of course, it would be, well, all the way to here, the straight angle would be 180. And then this little gap here, I've now figured out, has to be equal spacing to this one, so 45. So 180 degrees plus 45 degrees, of course, gives me... 225 degrees. So there's my two solutions. And again, you can check that by seeing is tan 45 giving you the result 1? And of course it is. And is tan 225 degrees giving you the result 1? And it is. Okay, so now let's try this question here. Uh, the difference with this question here now is I'm giving it in radians, okay, which implies that I'm going to want your answer in radians as well. Now, I personally much prefer to work in degrees, so I'm going to do all my normal working out in degrees, and I'm just going to do the conversion to radians at the very, very end. 2 pi, of course, is the same as 360 degrees, so I know I'm looking for my standard two angles, uh, and that's all I need for this range here. So I'm going to get my two angles in my normal way in degrees first, then I'll convert to radians at the end because that's obviously what they're looking for here. Okay, so pause the video if you feel confident. So again, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do sine inverse root 2 over 2. Just a little note by the way, uh, root 2 over 2 is the same as 1 over root 2, okay? I'm giving it to you like this because this is the way your calculator will always give it to you. 
uh, all the calculator is doing is what we call rationalizing the surge. In other words, it's multiplying the top and the bottom by that root to give you root two over two, okay? And we know already from our equivalent fractions that when you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, you get an equivalent fraction. So root two over two is the same as one over root two. The calculator will always give it to you in this form though, because the calculator always likes to rationalize the surge. In other words, it likes to get rid of the surge on the bottom by multiplying by itself. Okay, that's just a little sidebar because sometimes pupils think they've gone wrong when um, they might be given a question where it's one over root two and then when they do it on the calculator, they get root two over two, uh, but it's the very same thing. Okay, we're gonna work with root two over two the way the calculator gives it. And the first solution, of course, uh, I'm gonna get by doing it on the calculator, sine inverse root two over two, and of course I'm getting 45 degrees. So there's my first solution. Okay, so I'm gonna draw up my unit circle now to figure out uh, where my second solution is. So root two over two, is that a positive or negative result? It is of course positive. So I know I'm gonna get a solution here where they're all positive and that's obviously my 45 degrees. So that's a gap of 45 degrees. And the second quadrant where we're gonna get the sine curve positive is of course in the S quadrant here. So again, you're analyzing your equal spacing based on your horizontal. So if that's a gap of 45, that's a gap of 45. So I'm looking for this angle all the way to here. And of course I can figure that out because if a straight angle is 180 and I know this gap going back is 45 degrees, then 180 take away 45 degrees is going to be 135 and my other solution. So again, do the check on the calculator. Is sine 45 degrees root two over two, or one over root two, the same thing. The calculator will give it to you like that though. Uh, and is sine 135 giving you the result root two over two? And it is. Now, of course, remember they've asked for the answer in radians. So if you remember from your trig, that your relationship between uh, degrees and radians is that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. That means one degree is equal to pi over 180 radians. So this is what we're going to use to do our conversion. I'm gonna take my answer 45 degrees and I'm just gonna multiply by pi over 180 to convert it into radians. And I'm gonna take my answer uh, 135 degrees and do the same conversion, pi over 180. So doing that, uh, 45 times pi over 180, I'm getting of course a quarter pi, which is the same as pi over four. And now for 135 degrees, I'm just gonna go back here, delete that, 135 degrees multiplied by pi over 180. And of course I'm getting three quarters pi or three pi over four. So there we go. There are our solutions now in radians, which is what they looked for when they gave me the range in radians.